over the past couple of days I've been getting some phone calls from people who are having some issues with their civil 3d drawings and after talking with them I've, I've realized that their issues were not really related to the drawing but much more so um, how they were managing their their sites and uh, the sites uh, portion of civil 3d is is sometimes misunderstood so I thought I'd put this little video together to explain that a little bit better uh, mainly what is a site uh, a site is an imaginary if you think about it, if you think about it it's like an imaginary box and in this box anything that's inside the box can interact with other items inside that box uh, for instance when you create a site I will create a brand new site right here um, you know I'll just call it you know uh, you know site one that's fine I don't care okay so there's my oh, so there's my site one and when I uh, create the site and I look at the site these are the items that I can have in a site I can have alignments and feature lines and grading groups and parcels now of these uh, grading groups and parcels are always going to be required to be in a site feature lines as you can see here and here as well as alignments found here and here they have the option to be in or out of a site okay so I'm gonna create a parcel real quick I'm going to create a parcel from objects and I'm gonna put this parcel in this site okay and uh, it's gonna be in site one I'll put it in there and I'm just gonna click OK and there's my parcel not a big deal I'm gonna create an alignment from that line crossing the parcel Create alignment from objects. I select this alignment with this line right here, and so be it. And when I hit enter, I have the option right here to put it in a site. Now, by default, it's set to none, so I'm going to leave it as none right now. And when I click OK, you're going to see that nothing happens to the parcel, okay? Because now that alignment is found outside of the site, okay? So what I'm going to do is take this alignment. And I'm going to select it and right click and I'm going to move it to site one. I'm going to click OK. When that happens, you can see that site one, uh, the alignment subdivides the parcel into two parcels. OK, and this is only happening because of the fact that they are in the same site. So there's no site, you know, something you're going to see on your screen like a a box or a grouping of anything it's just an imaginary collection of objects okay so if I were to move this parcel this alignment back out of the site let's go ahead and move it back to the none site it's now out of this site one and it goes back over here to none and so on you have yourself a, <clears throat> a, a parcel that's interacting all by itself Let's take this a step further. Let me draw two feature lines. And I gotta explain feature lines and how they interact in the site. Okay. So I'm gonna have two feature lines right here. Okay. And let me create a feature line here. Create a feature line from objects. Okay, I'll do this one first. And I'm gonna put them in site one. That's not a problem. I'm gonna go ahead and hit assign elevation. And let's make that an elevation of zero. That's fine. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a feature line from these objects as well. From this one right here. And I'm going to assign that elevation. And I'll do something like 100. Okay. And so I have that, those two uh, feature lines. Now, Let's go ahead and split this up real quick. I'm going to show you in a vertical to vertical. Now, from plan view, you're expecting this to have, uh, you know, two lines crossing as so. However, if I were to look at this in a three-dimensional view, you'll see that I have a problem here. Okay, and the reason that is is because these are two feature lines that cross each other. A lot of times people make this mistake, especially when they're doing something like a, a corridor in which they have a feature line of a driveway tying into the corridor. However, the corridor has its own feature lines. So which one wins? Well, in this example, they're using the both. They're both using the same style, 
and they're both in the same site. So when I modify this one, it wins. However, when I modify this one, it now becomes the winner. Last one modified is the one that wins. So how do you fix, how do you work with this? Well, obviously if I take this and I move it out of the site, if I can move to site and just for argument's sake, I'll put it in none. I'll put it in none. The two don't interact with each other anymore, as you can see over here. So if I take that and move it back into the site, you will see that they, they start interacting with one another. So how do I truly control this? Well, if you come over here to your site, and look at site one and look at your feature lines, I'm gonna right click on the feature line heading and go to properties. And you're gonna see that, oh, it's not the, in the options uh, setting of the properties, your feature lines have a hierarchy here. Okay, for instance, in this particular hierarchy, the corridor crown feature line supersedes anything beneath it. I can push these up or down to my liking, but for now, we'll just leave it as is. So I'm going to change one to cord or crown. Let's cancel that out. Let's take this feature line right here. I'm going to right click and go to the feature line properties. And I'm going to change its style to be cord or crown. And that's the highest ranking feature style. So no matter what I do, no matter which one I edit last, even though I'm editing the green one last, the blue line always wins because the blue line has the highest ranking feature line style. So these are different ways you can control your uh, styles. You determine how you want to manage that and hopefully this helps you with your drawings. All right, thank you.